Good morning, good morning, good morning, Bahamas. <clears throat> See Alan Johnson here. I guess I'm just kind of making this video and I guess who will ever watch it later will watch it later. A number of people have asked uh, concerning the FTX asset seizure, seizure. The number of people have heard me talk on the radio and various different posts on my personal profile page and ask about it. First of all, let me tell you my opinion. The action taken by the uh, Security Commission here, whatever, by other name, is a good first step. But here's where I have slight differences in it and what has been done. Uh, it's a little late, but this has been going on for weeks. And for those of us in the crypto space that follows uh, cryptocurrencies, now remember I said crypto space versus following cryptocurrency. Uh, we have seen this coming for months now with the spot that was going to be, be uh, between uh, Binance and uh, FTX. Uh, first of all, for many of you who might not understand, Coinbase was the one who basically sound the alarm concerning Alameda, or Alamanda, whatever the name it is, uh, concerning them and their uh, uh, irregularities on their books with the FTT uh, token. But what happens is uh, uh, CZ saw an opportunity to push back on uh, SBL due to uh, his advocacy for certain changes in regulation in the derivatives market in favor of his company FTX. I don't want to go into that long debate, uh, but I do hope that we can have a conversation to cure the ignorance of most people speaking about it. But I want to stick to the, uh, uh, the Bahamas government action. Uh, now, here's my summary. I see it as uh, very simple. Imagine that you have a, con a, a conglomerate of food stores, right? like you are a distributor that has a bunch of retail places. Uh, FTX has maybe 120, between 120 and 150 different companies. I just want people to understand that. There's about 150, 120 to 150 different companies that's affiliated or answers directly to FTX. So it's not a single company we're talking about concerning these assets and asset movement. So what the government of the Bahamas did is the equivalent of this major wholesaler distributor with 150 stores, the government of the Bahamas went and seized the, the, the shopping carts in the parking lot. That's what I, it amounts to. This is not necessarily a negative critique. However, it is an opportunity for us to look at the weaknesses in the legislation that we have beginning with the DARE bill, because it's not singularly a DARE bill, it's a need for real digital laws. I've, people have heard me say it over and over again, in the Bahamas, we have no digital laws in the Bahamas. Let me repeat, we have no digital laws in the Bahamas, and we have no data laws in the Bahamas. We however have laws that refers to digital and refers to data. There's a difference between laws that speaks to data and speaks to digital as the laws that govern digital and govern data. We do not have the laws that govern digital and govern data. This is why this FTX things becomes a task. First of all, crypto and cryptocurrencies, which is a subsection of crypto, which is or both is a subsection of the data economy, is purely digital and purely data. And so there is no in the purest sense, physical location to seize this information. There's no country or anything in any effect, because you could have this duplicated across multiple servers, which shows, again, that SPL and others still have control and access to those servers. You have a number of people, for instance, that say they want to help, help SPL or help FTX, who would basically have asked for access to the data room. I think a lot of those individuals that are asking for access to the data room of FTX is simply doing it for self-motivation purposes to simply get a better understanding of what FTX is or structure so they could improve their own. 
But the government of the Bahamas has not been able to seize the billions of dollars of digital assets that still reside on those on those servers. We don't. They don't have access to the passcodes. They don't have access to the uh, underlying code or anything of that effect. See, in my opinion, if you have, uh, say, you have uh, crypto current various different cryptocurrencies, uh, maybe you can include the FTT also. By seizing those, you get to protect more of the assets to for redistribution to the to the to the people who's impacted. Because even as you if you was to seize the servers and all those different things that are associated with uh, with FTX, and had a regime in place to actually be able to do these things, what you would do is you would actually be able to preserve those digital assets. If a sense of calm comes into the community, those digital assets actually increases in value. And so you would have more to actually recover to basically redistribute to individuals that are affected. Or for individuals, and that's when I say more to recover, because again, it's shown that some cash and other things was transferred out of FDX for personal use, abuse, call it whatever you want to. But whatever digital currency they still may have, you can actually still redistribute those to the people or redistribute the value to the individuals who wants to cash out. And the difference or increase for the stability that it brings to the marketplace in those various different currencies can actually use to compensate for the monies for the cash that has been lost. And, that, and that's what most of those people who even looked at supposed to be rescuing uh, FTX may have worth, maybe were thinking of. The problem is that when you, you, when you assume the assets of FTX, you would also be assuming the legal ramifications and even uh, uh, digging into your, uh, uh, your uh, accounts, your other accounts, by whatever regulatory regimes comes after you. So they wanted to see how could they separate uh, this type of environment in acquiring the assets of FTX. So we have to begin to examine these uh, our, our laws, just to understand. What we are doing with our dear bill is regulating an aisle in the food store. The food store is the data economy, the world's largest economy. You have Amazon, Google, uh, Facebook, Twitter, all of these are data companies and they just manage data, whether it be Instagram or TikTok or whatever. And so if we could actually create platforms that the Bahamas can actually enter into the data economy, all of these other subcategories such as crypto, cryptocurrencies, tokenization and things will automatically come with the data economy. The Bahamas, if looked at digitally, is the only place in the world that you can actually have constitutional data privacy, constitutional data sovereignty, and constitutional data protection. What do you mean by that? A law protects you. So if a big, not a state come in and want to pressure the Bahamas to change the law or violate the law, they can do it. They can change the law to meet the requirements to give access to your data even after the fact. Constitutional data privacy, constitutional data protection, and constitutional data sovereignty, they would actually literally have to have a constitutional referendum to have access to your information. And you know what a constitutional referendum requires. And so we have the ability to incorporate this as part of a, of a wider data economy that is a multi-trillion dollar opportunity. You know, uh, if you look at, at uh, uh, Facebook, I think a multi-trillion, you look at Amazon, multi-trillion, look at Alphabet, multi-trillion dollar companies. These are just points of interest in the data of economy that tells you the size of the data economy when you look at other people like SAP and all of these, and, and all these other people involved in this data economy. So we can convert and build a data economy. That's where our focus should be. To be obsessed with what I call the greater fool theory, which is cryptocurrency, and ignore the platforms which cryptocurrency is built and based on, is foolish. If we have fools amongst us who want to pursue in the cryptocurrency, not the crypto market, the cryptocurrency market, then they will be welcome but it'll be a subsection rather than a primary focus. You know, it's, it's kind of like you say, it's a car rental in the tourism business. Yeah, yeah, if you want to go into the car rental business, you yeah, you go ahead. 
And so they can exist. But we should not primarily focus on cryptocurrencies as our primary focus for diversifying our economy. Let's look at how we could build the data economy. We are geo, uh, uh, geographically located among the, uh, the uh, offshore, 60 miles, 70 miles offshore, to one of the greatest data consumption economies there is in the world. And they do business with China. China is here and other parts of the world. We have the complete uh, uh, Caribbean and South America market that passes through the Bahamas. And so, again, it, we become the conduit for which the world do data. Now, if you do data protection, data uh, sovereignty, and data uh, uh, privacy, what it does is you can create an environment, say, digital citizenship, where anyone that is a digital citizen of the Bahamas, their data would have to be kept in the Bahamas. That forces multi-billion dollar companies to dossimile themselves in the Bahamas and build servers and build uh, data centers, etc., in the Bahamas to, st to keep and manage the data for the individuals that are citizens of the Bahamas, just digitally or otherwise, whether it be a billion of them or not. Imagine that you making $5 of each digital citizen in the Bahamas, 1 billion digital citizens in the world who wants to own and their data. As a data citizen of the Bahamas, Facebook, Google, Twitter, TikTok, all of those would be subject to the laws of the Bahamas and they could not keep anybody's data or monetize it without economic participation of the person they're collecting the data on. Imagine that you have cancer, the BRCA gene, and they're doing study for the cure of cancer. And yet this genotype, which is part of your DNA, is used for some major discovery in the terms of billions of dollars. That's your data. By protecting that data, you can actually be compensated as part of that billion dollar discovery because without it, they would not have discovered it. And so that's just a small subset of what it is, from company records to uh, uh, personal records to, I mean, so many different things. The data economy is still an emerging and growing economy. We have the carbon economy coming up. Guess what? The carbon economy depends on the data economy. Every economy we speak of, the orange economy, the blue economy, the green economy, the silver economy, uh, the conceptual economy, the knowledge economy, uh, the aquamarine economy, the carbon economy, the platform economy, the shared economy, all of these is database economy models. So the data economy becomes the larger of the embracing of it. So I say to the Bohemian government, the, the intelligence you need to develop this country doesn't lie in the House of, a Parliament, in the House of Parliament. In fact, with all due respect, most of you did not know about these things until you were elected and then you became geniuses. And then we see that most of you, once you leave office, you lose interest in being the genius in the areas that you were genius for the five years. Take it as an insult if you want. When we talk about realizing what other developed and developing country realizes, uh, what is the name of uh, uh, Mao of China, or what is the name of Zing of China, you don't see him running around claiming he knows everything about all the various economic models. He has people around him, seen and unseen, that he depends on to not only inform him, but to execute. The same thing with, with, with Biden. The same thing with the, with the president of Canada. And so we don't need leadership to fiend knowledge. We need leadership to recognize that there's knowledgeable people around them that they can bring together as a collective hive and achieve the goals they're trying to grow and have, which is growth of the economy, so that behemoths can become part of one of inclusion. If we take the data economy and, and combine it with a human capital regime, that's another thing we don't have. We have no human capital regime that actually prepare behemoths deliberately and purposefully to participate in our economy as well as the various different global economies. Look at what is, what is happening to the, to the Prime Minister of the UK. He came as a product of Africa and India, uh, which was an education regime that prepares them. If you go and look at B schools, just search up the word B schools in India, they spend, send hundreds of thousands of people per year to school just to prepare them for various disciplines. Notice I said hundreds of thousands. They send as many people to school on a yearly basis as we have in a population. So while the world is preparing, we're not. 
And when they meet us, they're going to beat us. But we have advantages. We have location, location, location. And we have uh, tenure and security of governance. A secure currency that's backed by the U.S. government, technically, indirectly, which gives us huge advantages. We have constitutional protection, I tell you, of various different data. Data protection, data privacy, data sovereignty. So if we begin to look at these from a wider perspective, rather than stepping over the dollars to pick up the shiny nickels, we can change and transform the Bahamas. But back to FTX. We have to look at the laws and what it's lacked. Because we should have been seizing those 120, 130, 140, 150 companies of FTX and all of their assets, no matter where in the world they are, so that their servers and other things would have been seized, so that we could have been custodian of these assets for restoration. See, that is the greatest problem of this uh, token or cryptocurrency or whatever names you want to call it. But if you have a data economy and an environment for all of the data of these companies to reside within this jurisdiction, guess what? A simple reaching out for protection purposes. Because the only reason the government would have the authority to move for protection, it'll be because the company is going bankrupt or doing something else. If the company is functioning, going just like the other companies like Facebook and Alphabet and Amazon and, and SAP and all those other companies, the government has no authority to go in to check the data. Let's have a conversation about a real data economy that we could actually make an impact on the world and improve the lives of Bohemian by building real inclusionary economy. All of the various different economies I talked about, green, blue, orange, uh, uh, platform, conceptual, knowledge, digital, aquamarine, all of those is built on data. So when you hear the government and the government say they're blueprint for change, and they're talking about uh, uh, these economic models, the first thing you have to ask them for, not the plan, not the idea, to reveal the strategy. See, I plan on winning the lottery. Then ask me, what is my strategy? I could talk about my plan and what I can do when the plan happen, all I want. But unless I have a real strategy of winning the lottery, like catching a flight, carrying the money with me, buying a certain amount of tickets and things of that sort, then I will not win the lottery. I could plan all I want and nothing happens. So we must demand a strategy for them to build a real ecosystem, one of inclusion of behemoths into the global economy as well as the behemoth economy going forward. I have another video I will do sometime today, tomorrow, whatever, called the tokenization of the behemoth economy. It is not cryptocurrency. It, however, it comes under, may come under what is called a crypto uh, type environment. Okay, so uh, uh, Jason want to go live. Let me see what it is and what has to be said. Oh well, I didn't see the invite. I guess you'd have to send it again if you want if you want to. But I'm about to wind up because I don't want this to be too long. But I'm going to talk about tokenization of the behemoth economy. With tokenization of the behemoth economy, the typical behemoth could enter the hospitality and tourism market. Those are two different markets. We use them collectively, but those are two different markets. Hospitality is what people experience. That's like the Rome and, the, and, and things. Then tourism is what people do. Sports tourism, health tourism, wellness tourism, religious tourism, uh, those type of things. But by tokenizing the economy, you get to put a value on it and to share through uh, what is called offtake agreements and even using backstops, real estate as backstop, to enter the market with minimal cost. Typically, it will cost a bohemian about $10,000 to raise a million dollars in funding that is necessary to build a bed and breakfast or start a business in the tourism sector. And we're going to have a conversation on that. I had promised that we're going to have a conversation on a, on a talk show called What's Now? What's new and what's next? Consider this a start of that and it'll become more organized as I go forward. What's new, what's now, and what's next? Some 
whatever it is. But it's going to be what's now, what's new, and what's next. That's that's it. What's what's now, what's new, and what's next. And we'll have that conversation. And you you guys are free to inbox me, private message me, WhatsApp me at eight two five ninety seven hundred eight two five nine seven zero zero, and send me questions or subjects that you would like me to speak on, questions you would like for me to answer that we could better prepare us as a, as, as, as a country. But this economy needs participation of all of us. And for instance, if you look at the concept I just spoke of called hospitality as a subscription and tourism as a service, we could have 5, 10, 15,000 of us in the next two years enter into the behemoth economy, adding a few billion dollars in revenue to the growth of our economy. This is where we actually shift from the all-inclusive hotels that comes to the Bahamas that we call uh, we call cruise ships and actually have people to come to enjoy the beauty of the Bahamas for days if not weeks at a time. Thank you for watching. I hope the, uh, the, the exchange and the government will take into consideration the strengthening of our laws that allows for us to have full jurisdictional control of these companies who may register themselves here under the DARE bill and, another, uh, and a number of other bills that may be necessary for us to develop a real data economy in the Bahamas. Little effort. It, all it is is taking the knowledge, looking at the books. I know it scares some leadership because, believe it or not, what I speak of requires antitrust laws, it requires anti-corruption laws, it requires transparency laws, it requires freedom of information laws, and the likes. You see where that becomes very, very, very scary? The other laws it requires. It requires an anti-corruption law, a freedom of information law, an integrity law, uh, 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 antitrust law, and uh, uh, all of the things that we've been asking for. But guess what? Unless we come to understand each of these different economic models, and I would love to go to, to the 12 of them that I know about as possible in the Bahamas, one by one, so we can see the possibility and then we could actually look to see how you could fit into which particular one that it is that you think you best fit in. And I said to you, in the same way FTX and others come here and utilize, which is just a unique form of a crowdfunding or crowdsourcing platform, you could do the same thing to raise the capital you need. Minimal costs compared to the benefits that you will have. I appreciate if you would share this video Tell your friends, tell your families, make a note of my WhatsApp number. I'm going to set up a Telegram uh, uh, group so we could talk to each other more than the 256 that will be allowed on Instagram, I mean on, on WhatsApp, which I will still do the WhatsApp, but a Telegram group could have thousands in it. And I'm going to do that within the next week or by this weekend. And we could begin to have a conversation and I'll try to answer them as honestly and as openly as possible because I don't want to go on this journey alone. If you say, I would take as many of us uh, possible with me. And ending, please share the videos, and I'm going to come back later this afternoon tonight or tomorrow morning, and I'm going to explain to you how FTX or, 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 or Sam Beckman uh, uh, Freed was able to print $20 million and deposit it into his account and became a billionaire overnight. Now. I joke around and tell people all the time, I could make, in the digital space, I could make you a paper millionaire or a paper billionaire in seven days or less. Yes, I can. If that's all you want to be is a paper one, small change. $1,500, I'll make you a millionaire or billionaire on paper. Verifiable on paper. But if you want some real money to spend, there are methods for you to do it in real life. And that's the conversation I want to have. I spent six years preparing for today. Many of you hear me talk about it. We are now in the first convergence revolution. That's where, where, where analog and digital comes together. The second digital revolution, third technology revolution, fourth industrial revolution, fifth social revolution, which was forced into existence by COVID, where we have IoT, Industry 4.0, Web 5, which is Web 3 plus 2, uh, and, and uh, uh, 5G and the likes. I, and these things. We are in a 
place in time that never in the history of time will this ever be repeated, that five different revolutionary periods align. That tells you the opportunity that's available to Bohemians if only they're aware. It requires no hard labor, but it requires you to abandon talk and adopt thought. And we can do this both individually and collectively. And we could begin by taking possession of the tourism and the banking and financial services industry by creating a data economy. Because tourism is also now data. Don't mind the people who enjoy it. They are nothing more than digits on a computer. So thank you so much again. Share the video, comment, like, and encourage others to watch it and encourage others to participate and send me a WhatsApp message, inbox me on Facebook, Instagram, or whatever social media platform you want. And let's have this conversation. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, share the video, share the video, share the video.